Hello everyone, it's Melody Stroud. Thank you so much for joining me to look at our brand new, super duper exciting Lift the Flap Periodic Table. Oh my goodness. Y'all, this book is so much fun. I can't wait to show it to you. Hey Chantel. So what I love about this book is that I do not know uh, a lot of chemistry at all. I know I took it in high school and that's about all I remember, that I took it and that there was something called a Bunsen burner because I thought the word Bunsen was funny. That's all that I remember. Hey, Nadia. So super excited um, that I can give this to my children and hopefully they will remember a little bit more because it makes it fun. All right, so let's take a look inside. So right away, um, and this book, it's big. Oops, sorry. Um, it's nice and big, which I like. Um, and the pages are super duper thick. It's thicker than cardstock. It's, you hear it? It's really thick, which I like because it means it's going to stand up to a lot of wear and tear. So right away, it explains the periodic table, uh, what, a, what a chemical elements are. They clump together to make everything from specks of dust to whole planets. There are 118 elements scientists know about so far, and these elements are shown together in a grid called the periodic table. Nice intro. And then it says, hello, I'm an element. Each square character you see in this book represents an element. Nice. And this is a periodic table. And it shows, so this is kind of like the key to the book, because it says um, most elements are found as solids in this book. Solids look like me, a solid body, but elements can be liquid like me. There's the example of a liquid one. And then over here, or gases like me, chlorine. And so that's what the different bodies, it's kind of like the key to that. And then the table was invented by me, Dimitri Mendeleev, 150 years ago. Look out for me throughout the book. Really cool. Okay, and then uh, scientists have given each element a name and a short code name. I'm called Carbon. My code name is C. And so um, I'm going to show you the next page, which is, oh, this one too. Oh, there's so much. I'm not allowed to show you the whole book. Uh, I can only show you a little bit, but uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of give you a good overview because it's so good, y'all. So I, I really could show you every page uh, and talk for a good long while about it, but I won't. Okay. Um, elements are all made up of incredibly tiny parts called atoms. A tiny lump of any element is made up of billions of atoms. Inside every atom are much, much tinier parts called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Lift the flap to look inside an atom. Boom. Look at that. So cool, easy to understand, and pretty fun. Nice. Okay, and then um, the number of protons in an element's atom is what makes that element unique. So it just talks about that. Nice, nice. I've learned so much just from looking at this book. Um, let's see. Lots, this is talking about a compound that also um, talks about molecules. Hey, Stephanie. Oh, yeah, you got, you ordered yours. Wonderful. Hey, Natalie. So really, really cool. Okay, turn the page to find out how the periodic table works. There's our uh, little friend, Dimitri Mendeleev. Wonderful. Look! This is so cool! So fun. And of course, just gazillions of flaps. So great. Okay, so I am going to show you this page. I'm going to get closer. Okay, um, the periodic table looks like this. It shows 118 different elements and reveals each el which elements are similar and all that. Oh, Heidi says she's swooning. Yay! Hey, Lauren. Okay, hydrogen is the first element. The table is numbered from left to right. Even basic stuff like that, I didn't know. I, oh, honestly, I didn't know, so I'm so excited. So, boop, and then it says, the elements are laid out in order of how many protons their atoms contain. Hydrogen is first because its atoms have one proton and one neutron. Awesome, then look right here. It says, what does each box mean? And it tells you exactly what each thing means here. Super cool. Okay. Um, let's see. Each element contains one more proton than the number before it. I love it. It's laid out that even I can understand. Columns are called groups. Elements get heavier down each group. Horizontal rows are called periods. 
Great. Okay. And so right here, you've got tin, aluminum, boron. Go to page 910 to see what these elements, known as soft metals, are used for. Love it. Boom, nitrogen. These are called non-metals and are important for life. Find out more on page 11 and 12. <gasps> so great. And then it tells you where to find these guys. Okay. So ab about this too. So each flap opens and tells where to go for more information in the book about these um, elements. So great. Um, let's see more and more. Just, I love this. So it says here, a lot of the elements not found in nature are named after famous scientists. Lift the flaps to find out who. So this obviously is Einsteinium. Who do you think that's named after? Einstein. So neat. Yay! Oh my goodness. Okay, an element's code name called its chemical symbol can be quite different from its name. My name is Tungsten, but my symbol is W. That seems awfully weird, doesn't it? So you lift the flap and it tells you why. This is because many code names come from other languages, especially Latin and Greek. W comes from the German word Wolfram, but in English I'm called Tungsten. So look, he's got his little glasses on like he's all smarty pants. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So cool. I can only show you a couple more pages. Um... Oh my goodness, they're all so good, you guys. You have to get this. Um, okay, okay, this is neat. I'll show you this one. So hard, shiny metals. Um, so right here, niobium, I don't know if I'm pronouncing, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, is used to make special celebratory coins. Okay, nice. Look, look at the fist bump. Niobium and oxygen are doing a fist bump because they're that awesome. It says, when niobium reacts with oxygen, it forms vivid colors. Nice. So, so cool. And then you also have um, really great history in here. I love this. Okay. We, we all probably know this, but I think it's really fun too. So right here, mercury used to be used to make felt for hats. And then you see that? And then, woohoo. But people who made the hats often got mercury poisoning, which gave them wild mood swings. It was called Mad Hatter's Disease. Remember the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland? <gasps> That's right. So cool. Okay, one more I want to tell you. There's so many. Okay, so what was the other one I wanted to show you? Um, there's just so many. Okay, this one's neat right here. During the Second World War, a secret laboratory called the Manhattan Project was set up in America to research and make nuclear weapons. It's my cat cuckoo clock. It says, Einsteinium and Fermium were both discovered in the debris around nuclear bomb explosions. During the Manhattan Project, three new actinides were discovered and then kept secret from the rest of the world. So I love that you got history there, and it shows you, in the top of each page, it shows you which elements that that page is talking about. So there's the green here. It shows you where. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in love. There is so much in here. I wish I could show it all to you, but I can't. Um, ah! But it's so, so good. So here's the back of it. $14.99. Uh, if you have anyone who is going to be studying chemistry, um, or I mean, everyone, you, you guys, you need this book. It is so fun. I have learned so much and um, just had a great time exploring it. Yay. Okay. Well, this is my Friday favorite. I love it and you need to check it out. Have a wonderful weekend. If you're a member of my VIP group, UBB Special Peeps, be sure to hop over there soon. I will be um, announcing the winner to our this or that um, giveaway very soon. So hop over there to check it out probably in the next hour or two. All right. Have a great day, friends. Thanks for being here. Bye.